Before today's video guys, I'm about to show you the best NVIDIA control panel settings for gaming here for 2025 and I'm gonna go super in depth, explain every single setting step by step so you know exactly what to use and what not to use. And if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, that would help me out a lot. Are you tired of having high ping in Fortnite and you wonder how all your favorite Fortnite pros always seem to have zero delay? What you need for that is no ping guys. Your number one client to reduce your ping in every single game you guys want to play. Let's say you want to play Fortnite, you just search it up, select it and no ping is gonna Gonna give you an overview of all of the best servers available in your near. And the coolest part is it works on multiple regions. So if you like to play cash cap on a different region, it can still help you to get the best server. So just select the server you want to use, click on to optimize this game, and no ping is gonna automatically help you to get the best connection possible. Additionally, they also feature some FPS boost features, and they are all tested tweaks which are going to help you to improve your system speed. Make sure to check out no ping with the link in the video description. And now when it comes down to the best NVIDIA control panel settings, you first of all want to go to your desktop, right click and open up the NVIDIA control panel. From there on, you just gotta wait for a couple of seconds for it to fully load and we already now have the bar here on the left side with everything which we're gonna cover now. First of all, click under just image settings with preview and a lot of people for some reason think that if you click under my preference and put it to performance, that's the best one. But actually, as soon as you change anything in your 3D settings, gonna automatically swap over again to this one here. So therefore you wanna select use the advanced 3D image settings and click under take me there. I'm going to explain exactly which settings you should use and why and go through them one by one. Since my core audience is Fortnite, Valorant, and probably Counter-Strike and others like these, I would say guys, image scaling is definitely something which you don't want to turn on. It's a nice additional feature which can help you to boost your resolution, especially if you're playing on a lower one than your native, and it's kind of like AI upscaling a lower resolution to make it look better. It does in fact give you a little bit higher FPS and all of that, but in most cases for Fortnite, you definitely want to turn this off. Ambient occlusion, this one here, you kind of want to keep on off because everything which has something to do with lightning or ambient occlusion directly as a setting, you want to set up in the game directly. You don't want to do this in your nvidia control panel since every game handles this option here differently so therefore you want to put it on off the next up antistrophic filtering this one here again i'm gonna keep on application control for me in fortnite i always turn it off completely since i'm trying to go for the highest fps possible of course if you want to set it across all your games to something like 2x 4x 8x 16x to make all textures look really good because that's exactly what this setting does you're basically improving the overall quality of textures and of course feel free to put it whatever you guys want to try out of course depending on your system strength because it wouldn't make sense to keep it on all games across 16x if your PC is a low end build. But for me personally, since I always go for the best performance, I keep it on application controlled since I disable it in all these games manually. And the next option, anti-aliasing gamma correction, isn't as beneficial towards actually like improving your FPS and all of that. It kind of controls how lightning feels like in games, how it reflects on surfaces. So therefore, you definitely want to keep it on because it can help you to lighten up spots which are low light on maps or whatever games you guys are playing, let's say like a Counter Strike map. So therefore, I would definitely recommend you to leave it on on. Anti-aliasing mode. This one again, I like to keep on application controlled. Anti-aliasing itself is basically the technique making sure that edges in the distance are less bobbly and more sharp, making it a lot easier to spot enemies or wall structures and especially bring enemies in the foreground when they may be standing in front of a bunch of walls or whatever, you know, like item. This one here as mentioned, I keep on application controlled since I apply all of these directly in Fortnite and other games. And with the correlating setting, anti-aliasing transparency, you can kind of set up how good of a quality it should look like. 2x is super simple. The most common ones are something like 4x since it's a sweet spot between quality and performance. For me as mentioned guys since I'm playing on the completely lowest settings always to make sure that I can reach 240 360 hertz I always keep this one off. Background application frame rate is kind of an interesting feature. Let's say as an example that you're running maybe Google Chrome in the background. You're listening to music and the music video is running at I don't know what 60 fps right. To kind of like limit the usage of Google Chrome you could realistically maybe cap it to something like 20 20 FPS. I haven't really found any cases where this is like super needed. I mean, it's 2024. Everyone has at least like 16 gigs of RAM, but there's surely some instance where this might help with something, but I, I can't really think about one. Then for CUDA GPUs, guys, you of course want to select your main one. This only really makes sense if you have two GPUs built in, which anyways isn't the case anymore since SLI is basically not being used. And for most integrated graphics, I don't even think that they're going to appear in here. But yeah, always make sure that you check your main one. CUDA system fallback policy, this one you're going to keep on driver default. Don't need to change that. DSR factors, this one here is kind of interesting. Let's say now as an example that you're running a normal screen like most people, which is 1920 times 1080. 
You can actually use especially deep learning scaling, which is very popular lately, or legacy scaling, whichever you guys want to use. You create kind of like a resolution which is not supported by a display. Like for me, I'm running a 240 hertz panel on 1080p, but with deep learning scaling, I can actually simulate 2560 times 1440, which is of course a way higher resolution. So this kind of helps you to emulate something closer to 4K, 2K, or whatever in between you guys want to use. So you could theoretically check all of these here. And instances where this would be useful is if you're maybe playing a single player game or something like that and you want to make it look even better on your monitor you know squeeze out a little bit better performance of all or theoretically also in battle royale games you could realistically kind of like upscale your picture to 2560 times 1440 to make your 1080p screen look a little bit sharper there's some people will argue of course yeah on a 1080p monitor it doesn't matter at all but some other people might say it definitely does help which i do agree as well now for the low latency mode this one is super important guys because this one you want to keep on on. You don't want to put this on off. You don't want to put this on ultra. If you are playing Fortnite for other games, I know as an example for Warzone, people recommend to put it on off. But since the majority of my fan base is from Counter-Strike and Fortnite, definitely make sure that you leave it on on, guys. If you keep it on ultra, you're definitely going to come across a lot more problems than yeah, it actually helps. So therefore, always make sure that you keep it on on. This is also what most Fortnite pros are recommending. Okay, maximum frame rate limit. This one is kind of interesting. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we turn this actually on. Let's say that we are playing on a 360 hertz monitor and sometimes your PC can even hit almost 500 FPS in some instances. But overall on average your FPS are a lot closer to 240 FPS. What you could do of course is still leave it on 360 so in these instances where you have the higher FPS the game feels smoother. But then when it runs down all the way to 240, that's going to be noticeable. So this is where you got to find out for every game specifically what's actually like the average FPS which you can get. And I would rather try to get used to consistent 240 or even 200 hertz instead of getting used to 360 and then it falls down all the way to 200. Personally for me, I keep this off since I apply this in every single game directly individually. But that's just a quick tip which you could do. Next up, let's talk about multi-frame sampled AA MFAA. This one is only available to you if you have an NVIDIA card over the GTX 900 series or it started directly at the 900 series and it's kind of like an improved version of anti-aliasing. This one doesn't use single images anymore but multiple images and the way it works, it kind of gives you like still anti-aliasing but at a lower performance cost. This is why many gamers actually use this a lot in games guys, especially something like Warzone, Call of Duty, you know, of all that is like very popular. For me, as mentioned since i'm playing fortnite and it really doesn't matter at all because of the outside and all of that i turn it off but if you want to play some games especially single player games or maybe call of duty this is like the best example i can think about right now you could try to leave it on because it's going to give you definitely a lot better quality overall and it's not going to cost nearly as much performance as using normal fxaa so therefore yeah you can try it out yourself and opengl gdi compatibility this one you're actually going to keep on auto this again is something which really doesn't matter too much opengl rendering gpu you're going to keep on the one of course which is your main gpu on your pc the power management mode you're going to keep on preferred maximum performance that is kind of self-explanatory preferred refresh rate this one guys always keep on highest available you don't want to get limited by a game or something like that or some bad in-game settings so therefore always keep it on highest available now for the shader cache size i personally keep it on 10 gigs and i would also recommend you from time to time to actually go into your temporary files and making sure that you click onto it and delete your DirectX shader cache as it mentions here cleanup files created by the graphics system which can speed up application load time and improve responsiveness. They will be regenerated as needed. And sometimes these are interrupted, especially if you're playing on a new season on a game, let's say Fortnite, a brand new map and all of that. You definitely want to make sure that the DirectX shader cache gets deleted from your PC so that it can regenerate. You're going to take one or two games, but then afterwards your Fortnite is going to feel so much better. Now for texture filtering, anisotropic sample optimization, this one actually you can leave on on guys. It kind of downscales the quality of textures overall in game, providing you better performance. But keep in mind, if you have this on, your game is going to look really bad. Like this is going to tank definitely on your textures. So therefore, you got to note for yourself, is my PC super low end? that I have to go this step to actually turn this on. And as NVIDIA also recommends it, I keep it on off guy. Other than that, your game is gonna look really bad. But as mentioned, you can leave it on and get some better performance out of it. But for me personally, I keep it on off. And next up, we have LED bias. And this one really doesn't matter because we are not changing the level of detail anyways in our NVIDIA control panel, NVIDIA profile inspector. But you can keep it on allowed just so the setting is theoretically possible. For most of you, you're never going to change this anyways. And next up, we have the texture filtering quality. And this one we're going to put again to high performance, guys. Looks a little bit worse and high performance looks the worst but it again provides you with the best FPS. Now next up guys, we have texture filtering trillionaire optimization. And this one is 
pretty handy definitely because it reduces the GPU workload. It kind of reduces the amount of texture samples which your GPU has to render at a time. So therefore definitely provides a nice performance boost. And again, if you keep it on off, the game is going to look better. If you keep it on on, it's going to look a little bit worse. But definitely the performance increase is a lot more beneficial here. Threaded optimization, you just simply have to keep on auto. This is setting up how many threads your game is going to utilize. And most games anyways do a perfect job with this nowadays, guys. 2024 as mentioned, if you're maybe playing some older games, you kind of want to experiment around with it. But I would recommend you just simply keep it on auto. Triple buffering and vertical sync go hand in hand and you definitely want to make sure that both of these aren't off. The only instance where vertical sync can actually help you if you are playing let's say on a 60, 75 hertz monitor and you're getting 300 FPS and it actually leads to screen tearing. This is where you can turn off vertical sync. And all of these last three options here, virtual reality and Vulkan OpenGL preset method, you're going to keep on the native settings. Then you can click on to apply and then you can already see you have the best settings applied for your NVIDIA control panel. Also next up, make sure that you click under display and change resolution. Make sure that you select the PC native resolution and select the highest refresh rate of your monitor. You would laugh how many people actually don't use the highest one and an embarrassing role. You paid a lot of money for a good monitor and you're not utilizing it. What are you doing? The next up, adjust desktop color settings. Here again, select your main monitor and then scroll down a little bit and under digital vibrance, I would highly recommend you guys to go from the native setting, which is 50 all the way up to 75. This is going to make your overall monitor look a lot more colorful, a lot more bright, so much easier to spot enemies. And in addition to that, you can also go under video and adjust the video color settings. Again, select your monitor and put your saturation as well to 75%. You're going to instantly notice how much nicer your monitor is going to look like, a lot more colorful, and everything is going to look so much better. Then only click and apply and click under yes, and you're already good to go. Everything is set up now correctly, and you are ready to go into your favorite games and make sure that everything is going good.